All right, we're making great progress with our scene here, and it's going to start moving along very quickly. We're going to bring in some lights and some textures. We're going to add in the walls in a really fun process. But before we can do any of that, what we really should really take a look at is the camera, sort of see where our camera is and what our view is. Because right now, this is not really the camera view. If I hit the F12 key to render it, I think it's going to be quite uh, disappointing because if I render what's in the screen right now, it's going to be yeah, blank or nothing. Because I think right now my camera is it turned off, first of all, and it's also buried inside of one of our objects. So I'm not getting anything from the render result. So the render result is the thing that you save an image or an animation or simulation or whatever you're doing. So that's why the camera is important. So I've had it turned off this whole time just to have it out of the way. You might have had it on this whole time, but find the camera in the outliner here, and I'm just going to turn on the eyeball on it and sure enough it's actually up here somewhere buried inside this column so that's part of the reason why it just sort of ended up when I moved the columns around I, I buried my camera inside of a column which is why I didn't get anything from the render result um, but yours might be in a different spot that's fine depending on where you moved uh, your arches all I'm trying to do right now is set up the the look of the image that you've been seeing my original rendering um, that you've been seeing at the beginning of each of the tutorials here you can put your camera pretty much anywhere you want and I'm going and shoot. Uh, I'm going to continue on in the tutorial setting up the camera to that location and I recommend that you at least do it follow along with me to begin with so you know how to adjust the camera how to change the shot and all of that and then once you know how to do it then you can put your camera anywhere you want I'm going to hit the tab key to get out of the edit mode I was editing one of the stairs I think at the end of our last tutorial let's make sure we're in the object mode and then select that camera either by clicking on it or clicking on it here in the outliner and I'm going to just before I do anything else here I'm just going to back out a little bit and just scooch it down so it's outside of my arch way there and kind of get it near where I think it's going to want to be. I'm going to want to be sort of looking across the trench. I'm nowhere near. If I hit the F12 now, I should see something. Yep, <laughs> that's the bottom of the trench. No light shining in there. So it's not a very exciting uh, view, but we'll change that here in just a second. With the camera selected, we get a new button over here in the properties panel. These little green buttons appear every once in a while when there's a context that makes them want to appear. So depending on what you have selected, these buttons appear or disappear. With a camera selected, you get a green camera icon. So if we go ahead and click on that icon, we get some things that we can do to set up a camera. Your camera does not have to be in perspective. You can make a camera ortho orthographical orthographic um, so that there's no perspective in it but we we're going to leave it in perspective right over here but what we are going to change is our focal length 50 millimeter is great for close-up stuff for portraiture and things like that but for our scene here it's a little narrow focused now remember we can see through the camera by clicking on either this icon over here or hitting the zero key on your full-size keyboards number pad or you can always hit the tilde key and select view camera from this list so a lot of different ways there's probably a couple other ones too a lot of different ways to go through the camera lens and so you can see that's basically what I just sort of rendered out in that previous scene not a lot going on down there this little orange box here is the extents of the actual rendered image if I move right now I'm just going to immediately pull myself out of the camera view and go back into a, a working perspective view so what I want to do is be able to move around while I'm looking through the camera so I'm going to hit that zero key again to jump back into that view over here if I zoom in a little bit in the scene here all I'm really doing look at what's happening here is that I'm just zooming this little viewfinder closer to me or farther away from me I'm not actually changing the position of the camera you can also hit the home button if you have a home button on your keyboard there is no place like home and that will just basically fill your whole window with the view through your camera so any of those are fine but with look at while i'm looking through the camera i'm going to come back over here and select that camera make sure i've selected the green uh, camera icon and change the 50 millimeters to 30 you don't have to type in the millimeter you can just type in 30 and enter and it will default to that and what that's done is kind of widened our field of view a little bit now so we're going to see more in our scene but now we actually have to move uh, our, our view around now all of the rotation tools like uh, rotate or um, grab it doesn't really make any sense to scale your camera but you can certainly grab it or you can rotate it um, those that's fine in some cases it may just be easy to kind of just grab it and move it really quickly closer to where you want but once you get it sort of where you want it to be you're actually better off looking through the viewfinder to make the changes that you want to make in the future so you can do this once if you've already done the uh, the beach tutorial I've already showed this to you and you probably have this all set up already but if you haven't let me show you how to do the quick key command to 
lock camera to view. I find it's a really inconvenient place and you want to jump in and out of it all the time. So it's a perfect candidate for a quick command. So hitting the Q key, but your quick favorites are going to be blank on your new copy of Blender, but you can add anything you want. And this is the two that I have there all the time. And I add things and remove them, you know, when I, you know, need, need to. Uh, but the one that's always there is lock camera to view. And I'll just show you right now on the, my quick favorites, what that does. Now, if I use my middle mouse button to look around, you can see what I'm actually doing is changing the view through the camera. And if I pan through this, you're going to pan, not by hitting the space bar, but by holding the middle mouse button and the shift key down. Um, I'm, I've changed my keyboard shortcut to be the space bar, but anything that you do in terms of zooming, you're actually moving the camera around now or looking up or looking down or whatever, that's all actually affecting where the camera is pointing. It's almost like you're walking around looking through the viewfinder of your camera and, you know, looking at various things. But you have to remember to turn it off. So uh, I'm going to hit the Q key again and turn off lock camera to view. I don't know how many times I've got my shot just perfectly composed and it's like, oh, that's perfect. And then I've jumped to top view or something, forgetting that I had left the, the set camera to view uh, turned on still and I've lost it. So make sure that you uh, turn that off. Okay, so if you don't have the quick favorite, let me show you how to add it here. The N key brings up this little side panel over here, the end panel basically, where there's all kinds of little tabs that run down the side here and these all some of these are default and some of these come from add-ons that you can add lots of things live over here but we want to find the view tab right over here click the third one down from the top and that's going to be the view tab and you'll see right in the middle actually maybe closed the view lock might be closed so open up view lock and inside there you will see camera to view see it's kind of buried and you have to get there in a couple of steps here uh, and now I've turned back on that same camera to view so I'm actually changing what the camera is pointing at as I move it around so you don't have to reach in here every single time what you want to do is right click on this or any other command that you want to add here and add it to the quick favorites. You'll see mine says remove from quick favorites because I already have it in my quick favorites. That's how you get rid of one too, by the way. But you can add any one of these things or even assign a shortcut to it if you want by just adding it by right clicking on, on, a, on the name of a command here. So if I wanted like render region to be a quick favorite here, I could just click on that and say add to quick favorites. So I really recommend that you do that with camera to view and I'm going to deselect it right now and that way you don't ever have to uh, change it again. So we've changed the focal length of our camera over here and we've changed the position of it. And now let me show you one other thing that's kind of fun is that it can be kind of a little tricky to kind of get the camera exactly. Oh, let me go back to uh, locking camera to view here. I'm going to scooch it to again. I'm trying to match it be, to be a little closer, but see, boy, it's a one scroll wheel jump is really, actually that's pretty close, but you know, these, these can be pretty coarse controls here. So let me show you another fun way to, uh, to have your camera uh, work. So I'm going to go inside of my camera and I'm going to do shift and tilde. Shift and tilde brings you into game mode, basically. So now all you need to do is move your camera around, just like you were looking around as a character in a game, and you can just point the camera by where you're looking at it. And the WASD keys, the walk keys that you have in a lot of games, work here as well. And the nice thing about that is they're a little bit like gentler in the control. I can just like stray sideways a little bit there. The or I can move forward or backward or a little bit. So I find that's a really useful way to kind of get your shot a little closer to what you want it to be. So I'm thinking it's more like my original image is more kind of like, ah, somewhere in here. Actually, I think my, my camera might actually be a little bit farther over. Oh, and as soon as you click the button here, then uh, your, your mouse button here, you jump out of that game mode here. So I've got to shift and tilde to get back into that. Now I'm going to see if I can tip my view a little bit more. I think I see a little bit. Yeah, that's closer, I think, to the view that I have here. I'm not actually looking at it. I'm just doing it from memory, something like that. Again, just try to match mine. And then once you know how to do it, once you've matched mine, you don't have to do your render in exactly my position, but um, it's good to learn how to do this by trying to be something specific. Um, and then instead of just saying, well, that's good enough. I don't really know how to do what I want, but uh, I, I can settle on this. Actually try to try to make it look like mine and then do a render that way. And then you can put cameras anywhere you want doing all kinds of things. So I'm going to save it right there. I'm going to hit the Q key and remember to unlock my camera view here now. So now I can go into a top view and I can go right back to that view. And I can go into to a, a side view here and I can go right back into that view. So anytime you want to return back to the view, looking through your camera and figure out, is this column even in the shot. No, it's not. So I don't really even need this one. Um, that's a super handy thing to use that zero key on your number pad, click on this little button over here, or use the tilde view camera command to start looking through your camera. You're going to want to do that more often now that we're starting to get closer to the end of the project.